Welcome into episode one of the Pilgrimage Perspective, brought to you by the Franciscan Pilgrimage Program. My name is Andy Trado. I will serve as host for this brand new web series. And you're probably asking yourself, well, what is this all about? Well, in the next couple of minutes, you'll find out. We're going to go over subjects over the next couple of months that we normally would on pilgrimage, but unfortunately, because 2020 and COVID, we're not able to do that until the end of this year, if not until 2021. So we thought we'd bring a little bit of pilgrimage to you. So in this first episode, we are covering the subject of PTSD. We talked with four of our wonderful leaders, Father Conrad Targonsky, Father John Quigley, Reverend Bill Reese, and Sergeant Greg Massiello. Talk about their experience with PTSD and what they see when they lead a pilgrimage and why Assisi and Rome are some of the most magical places and special places for those who suffer from PTS. So sit back, relax. Here's part one of the first episode of the Pilgrimage Perspective. This is the first episode of what we're calling the Pilgrimage Perspective. Um, we're taking different subjects and topics um, surrounding the idea and the journey of pilgrimage. And this one I think is really important because of everything going on in the year of 2020 or, or uh, one of our, our great pilgrimages is the Veterans Pilgrimage. So today's topic is PTSD, uh, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, which affects millions of people around the world. Um, and one of the things that we specialize in pilgrimage is the veterans aspect of it. So Conrad, I'll ask you first, why is PTSD and the veterans pilgrimage, why do they go hand in hand? Why is it so important? Why is pilgrimage so important for those people? Well, I think my basic idea was that when people come back from war, uh, I operate on the principle that we've got tarnished, our souls have been damaged. That's my basic premise. And the soul is the, <clears throat> the receptor of beauty, receiver, receiver of beauty. And what we try to do on pilgrimage is to reconnect with nature and also to heal our soul. Um, and that seems to be the vast problem that most veterans feel when we come back from, from the uh, war zone uh, we, we've been, you know, we've seen horrible things. I remember marking when COVID began, uh, I said it was, this was like, COVID is like a, like a deployment because you don't know, um, you're, first of all, you're, you're kind of like sequestered in one certain place. You can't move around freely. Uh, you're at the um, beck and call of the authorities and you keep getting extended. You don't never know when you're actually going home. So it has a lot of, I talked to some of the veterans about that. They said, yes, it's almost like a reliving of, of, a, of a long time of deployment. But uh, PTSD, uh, or as you say now, PTS, uh, basically is a reaction of the soul's uh, failure to record and, and assimilate beauty. A pilgrimage has always been that opportunity to reconnect with nature and to um, take that journey to the inner self. So, Greg, being a veteran yourself, um, one, of the, one of the quotes that you, and I steal it all the time, but I give you credit, um, it is, pilgrimage always meets you in life where you need it to. When it comes to pilgrimage, how does that affect you as a, as a, a veteran? So, uh, um, if I could go back to what something Conrad had said about beauty sure. and the soul. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, one of the things Conrad says on pilgrimage is the body of returns from war for the soul. And I think there's this kind of disconnect uh, people experience. And, uh, and I think pilgrimage is particularly strong for people who've experienced that di disconnect. And in particular, uh, a certain degree of uh, difficulty in finding peace for themselves. And, and you hear from some of the veterans that once they were on pilgrimage, they were able to reconnect with a sense of peace inside themselves. Uh, for the first time. You know, for me personally, when I go on pilgrimage, yeah, I've been a veteran. It's nice to, I, I've worked with veterans with PTSD. Uh, it's, it's become a, a place, a, a sacred place for me to connect with veterans on, on their journey. You know, I, 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 for, for me, every time I go, something else touches me a little differently. And it's, it's, 
it's it seems to meet me for where I, wherever I'm at uh, at this particular stage of the journey of life. Now, I think when other veteran uh, other pilgrimages go to Assisi, there's a there's a uh, emphasis on sacredness sacredness of space, the sacredness of place, and I think for ours it's more of the sacredness of the journey. In uh, uh, meeting uh, veterans in their journeys, in terms of where uh, where they are at, in uh, helping them connect with Saints Francis and Claire along the way. Uh, Reverend Bill, you you've done sure. several pilgrimages uh, in recent years as well. Um, what do you find as something that Pilgr or veterans and pilgrims in general, uh, where is that healing that they see? Is there, is there a certain place that they experience that? Uh, great. That's a great question, Andy. Um, you know, as a Vietnam veteran, and we've seen a, a large gathering of Vietnam veterans over the, the last five pilgrimages that I've made, we, we came back as baby killers. We came back with uh, a lot of our PTSD hidden and undisclosed. And um, even though it's been 50 years since I've been in combat, as Greg said, I'm, I'm still uh, having, having wonderful uh, moments and, and some tragic moments as well, un uncovering a lot, of, a lot of those things that I was forced to cover up. You know, there, there's something in scriptures teach this. There's something that we as human beings, as we go through suffering, uh, have in common with other sufferers. And I think that that's one of the powerful things that I've witnessed uh, on the pilgrimages with the veterans is, first of all, there's a camaraderie. When you get the veterans together, whether you're a goofy Marine like, uh, like Father Conrad or uh, a guy from the Air Force like Greg or me from the Army, we have that esprit de corps. And within, within a few moments or a few hours, we bond together. And then the suffering that we are able to share, even though it's a long time away, uh, roots us in the story of Francis and Claire and the suffering th that they they went through of, of body, mind, and spirit. Father John Quigley, uh, I know that you've done many pilgrimages, both on your own and for FPP. Um, do you, just for regular pilgrimages, you, you might not necessarily always touch on PTS, but are there experiences and and uh, just times on pilgrimage where things just kind of come out. It just, it doesn't necessarily, you're not prompting it, but you can see it as someone who's been there multiple times. Yeah, uh, thanks. I am, um, I've given a number, worked on a number of pilgrimages and um, I wasn't really steeped in the sources, you know, with Bonaventure and uh, Chilano, et cetera, but um, had an overview, but w leading them, I was trying to, uh, try to understand what was Francis dealing with, you know, he, he constantly refers to himself as a sinner, he's a sinner. And I thought, what, 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 what happened to him uh, that he had this incredible shift in his own 180 degree turn in his life? And, and I've gone, I went back and I, and I tried to get as much information of what was he like in the prison what was it like for a 20 year old guy who was top of the, of the pile, who was spoiled, the apple of his father's eye, had resources, was in two or three battles before this, and then all of a sudden was thrown into a prison for about a year. And then I tried to do research with people. What was it like for him in that prison? I realized that there were no such things as prisons. They, they were not invented in Europe for about another 80 years. So where was he held in Perugia? And the best pieces I can put together is probably a quarry just off of the, the town square where they would quarry the rock to build the, the buildings in the, around the, the square. And there's where they would keep prisoners on for like fish in a, a fish tank at a real fancy restaurant. They, they would keep them there uh, because these were valuable trophies to, that they could sell back to their families or to their towns, their communes. And so it wasn't a room with bars and a jailer with a key. It was, it, you were in a pit probably, and the pit wouldn't have a roof. 
and you try to put a 20 year old kid on the top of the of his line in a pit open quarry for a year he doesn't know if the people are really trying to get him he doesn't know if he's forgotten he's forced to understand what does it mean to have been in battle why was he there who sent him there who won the war uh, his whole world collapsed and in that collapse we what, what we realize now today we, he was the victim. He was he was a victim of post-traumatic stress. Now, Bonaventure doesn't talk about it. Thomas Achillano doesn't speak about it. But then again, if you look at, at the other other scientific uh, uh, studies we have, when they in the 1970s when they opened up Francis's tomb, and they they did medical research on his bones. They came up with the idea that he had a tuberculosis, he had glaucoma, and he died of malnutrition. That's what modern science told us about his bones. Bonaventure never says anything about glaucoma. They didn't say anything about tuberculosis. <laughs> but but that's, what, that's what took his life. And I think today, especially now, with, when Richard Nixon was the one who who did a, uh, he, he was really troubled why these guys were coming back from Vietnam and they were coming back discombobulated. Some of them were okay, some were discombobulated and then they were nervous. So he had this scientific study put together a panel to find what is this Vietnamese syndrome? What, what is the problem here? And that's when they came back with some really clear uh, characteristics and we begin to get the, 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 the formal title of post-traumatic stress. Now we're also realizing that post-traumatic stress is not just people returning from Vietnam. It's women who've been raped, it's children who've been abused, it's people who have lost their jobs, it's people whose whole world collapses, people in an earthquake, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I do on the pilgrimage, I begin, and I give a two hour talk on the post-traumatic stress that, that permeated, changed Francis's life. And, and, and his grappling with that and his working with that is what we now call St. Francis of Assisi. And so we go back and I look at, the, yeah, I go with different parts, uh, different things, the economic analysis that he did and the formal, uh, sophisticated way of talking to him and his thinking in that whole. Um, uh, there's a number of other characteristics of post-traumatic stress that uh, I refer back and show how this has led to things. And, and we look at these we look at these characteristics as super spiritualized um, holy things of a saint, when actually it was just the profound reaction of a very damaged man. And his greatness is that he he, he dealt with it in in a, in a heroic way, and he found he found a purpose with crucifying Christ in, in Jesus as a real person. And this, uh, so I, I spend the whole retreat, the whole mission, the whole, the whole pilgrimage. We talk of post-traumatic stress. Uh, thank you for that. I, I really appreciate you, you bringing that to light because one of the things when I went on pilgrimage, I've been on two, I've been on a high school and just a, a normal Assisi pilgrimage. And I actually had no idea that he suffered from PTS. Um, and that is the one thing I kind of, that made him very human for me. And for me on the pilgrimage, I felt like he was walking with us mm -hmm. um, in the, in the presentations. It was like he was a normal everyday man. And I think that is a very powerful feeling because when you're taught about saints, you know, they're very heavenly beings and, and they did a lot of wonderful things, but it was insane to me that they were just normal people. You know, I think that's really forgotten in a lot of the teachings. Um, and one of the things that, that, sorry, did you say something, Bill? No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so one of the things that um, I think is going to be really important in the next couple of years is dealing with some of the traumas that 2020 has given us. Um, yeah, we see people lose their jobs, uh, riots in the streets. Um, unfortunately, people are dealing with loneliness. We, we see a lot of people... Um, a lot of us have grandparents or brothers that, or sisters that are, are dealing with it because they're not allowed to leave their homes, or their friaries, because it's just not safe for them. Um, so why, and this is for everybody, why is 2021 and beyond so important for pilgrimages, uh, just dealing with this and helping people deal with it? I, I know for myself, uh, having time in the Porcincula, 
I found myself forgiving people that have harmed me or thinking about things I hadn't thought about in decades that were so painful that it just prompted and just kind of, it just, I let it go. And I didn't think I would ever do that. Um, I went in not expecting that, but that place for me, both times I've gone, it's just been a, a, a kind of a spiritual cleanse. So why in the years going forward, why is pilgrimage so important? I find it curious that maybe we would not have the Francis of Assisi we know today if he hadn't gone to war, if he hadn't had that PTS experience. I like what Father John quickly said about the quarry. And then it's also curious that he finds his beauty regained through nature. He does something very, very different than a lot of us coming back from war and a lot of people who are going to be affected by the, by the COVID is that not only did he go within and beheld beauty, but also it thrust him into servant, lead, uh, servant leadership for the lepers. And that's very curious. Very, very, he saw in them um, a opportunity to kind of like feel a, a sense of comfort. And that's why I think where the world is, is going to lead it after COVID. We are, I, I think we have to look at what we're learning from this. We're, um, uh, we're getting a whole brand new perspective. So I, I think Francis has the key, I think, for the veterans and also with the assistance of Claire. But I think he also can be a, uh, a surge for people coming down from, this, <clears throat> from COVID. Uh, I, I think also, uh, for, for me, the, the words that Francis heard from San Damiano's cross uh, rebuild or restore would apply to the farmer in Iowa who just lost everything, to someone who just lost grandma from COVID, uh, from, from veterans coming back from Afghanistan, Somalia, wherever they've been. It's a time of rebuilding and, and restoring. And the, the story of Francis and Claire captures that uh, in, a, in a spiritual way, in a physical way, in a moral way. And um, I, I think that that's, that's what pilgrimage can offer to, to all people. Not, uh, sure, veterans, because we work with them so closely, but, but all people to, to think, how can you rebuild? And how can your life and your future be restored? And Francis has the answer. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I just... It's to me, the world needs a pilgrimage right now. The amount of times I've said to myself, to my wife, um, to my colleagues, or even friends, the world needs a pilgrimage. Um, we all need to walk down the streets of Assisi and it's a wonderful place, but also just the cleanse to get away from the terrible traumatic things that have happened to us. And it's just one of those things that I, I think that, the human mind cannot take all of the things that have happened that you see on the news. Um, it's just time to step away. So I guess since we can't go right now, um, Father John Quigley, do you have any suggestions about what people might be able to do before they can go? Is there any kind of just Andy, spiritual mental retreat? Sorry, Greg. Andy, before we go there, I, I, yeah. I'd just like to address the, one of the things you brought up beforehand. Sure, before go ahead. Where yeah, to go yeah. Because, because I do think one of the issues that, that have uh, basically we've been dealing with within our culture for the past 50 years has been the, the secular, secularization of religion. We've, uh, we've deconstructed religion uh, to a significant degree, uh, in, in a large degree in our culture. And I do think, you know, one of the things that's going to happen, one of the things that the challenges of 2020 beckons for is to find our way find a way back to God, you know, and, and I, and I know, and even in my work that I did with the veterans, one of my frustrations uh, that I would uh, run into was the whole idea of, uh, take, you know, therapeutically, we were supposed to take God out of the equation, you know, it wasn't something, it, it, it could be discussed, but it wasn't something that could be focused on. And I think one of the, one of the, um, one of the benefits, one of the strong points of pilgrimage is the fact that it helps people put God back in the equation. Yes. You know, 
if I could, one of the veterans, one of the veterans responded to uh, 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 the questions I sent out this weekend, and and one of the questions was, did the uh, uh, did the pilgrimage change your life? And what he said was, I hadn't been to church or reconciliation for almost thirty years. The military pilgrimage saved my life, which was spinning out of control after the death of my wife. My first confession in all these years was in San Damiano. During our time in Assisi, Father Conrad suggested I should look into the Franciscan Third Order, uh, Third Order Secular, had professed three years later. And he goes on to talk about how the pilgrimage uh-huh. changed his life. Now, I will say, Father Conrad is, seems to be mentioned quite often in these comments. And I, I didn't even get a footnote. So Conrad, kudos to you in terms of, uh, of uh, your impact <laughs> on people years later. Uh, Conrad, Conrad is the, uh, the uh, if this was the Oscars, he'd be the, uh, he, he'd win for the best, uh, uh, the, the lead actor, actor in the lead role, where the rest of us are, <laughs> the rest of us are supporting Supporting actors. actors. Very good. Very good. Thank you for that, Greg. I, I appreciate that. Is is that something you guys normally do? Um, sending out just questions to former pilgrims just to kind of shape your upcoming uh, pilgrimages? So I, I think I just did it as preparation for this. So, I mean, we, okay. we stay in contact with them periodically sure. throughout the years. And I, sure. I thought... You know, I think it's it's generally, in for, from a therapeutic standpoint, it's important to have some kind of follow up for research to understand like mm-hmm. how effective is this. Mm-hmm. And so it was just nice getting some feedback from people to hear how uh, the pilgrimage uh, continues to live on for themselves. Is it a common question? And this is for everybody. Is it a common question that you all ask? Is is this something that changed your life? Is that something that comes up normally or potentially? Oh yeah. What kind of answers do you get? Is there any reasons as to why? Is there any similar or, you know, um, frequent well, answer, I guess, is that? I, I think it, it varies. I, I, one of the things that comes to mind was uh, we had one of the veterans who uh, came back uh, for a second time uh, and uh, her husband came with her. And one of the things he said was uh, she has said that uh, on pilgrimage, she found peace for the first time. And, and he said, and I'm, I'm searching for that. I, I want a sense of that peace for myself at the same time. So you hear from people maybe indirectly without directly asking them, has the pilgrimage changed your life? When mm-hmm. we follow up, you, it's, it's, it tends to be when, when the topic of pilgrimage comes up, you tend to get something powerful that was life changing. I think many veterans are, were very hesitant to uh, come on the pilgrimage because they were afraid of the overload of religion. Yeah. And then when they came, actually the, the very first night, they seemed to bond together. And then of course we had rooftop experiences, which were after the day we would gather on the rooftop of Caspa Giovanni or Trinoi and just talk about how different places affected them. And little by little, day by day, there was more and more sharing. So by the end of the pilgrimage, they were feeling that, like Greg said, the sense of peace, but also they were amazed at how a place, the spirituality of place, can affect them for the better. And I think there was something everyone knows about a CZ. I just transforms you.